Um, we can also do inference for a single mean. And so we're gonna think about the mean of the variable number of hours worked last week. Um, that's gonna be our statistic of interest. And in this case, the point estimate is gonna be the sample mean. So um, I'd like you to see if you can pause the video and try to find the mean for that variable. And I'll, I'll actually do it. So I'm gonna do mean parentheses tilde and then number underscore of underscore hours underscore worked underscore last underscore week comma data equal GSS. And if I hit play, it tells me NA. Ah, okay, I need to put in that NA dot RM equal true. And again, why R is not consistent about how you deal with NAs, I don't know, people made different decisions. But if I hit play, now it gives me the number 41.28. That makes sense to me. The sort of full-time work week is supposed to be 40 hours, but I know people who have multiple jobs um, or people who work overtime. And so it makes sense to me that the mean might be a little bit higher than 40 hours a week. Um, we could also have visualized the distribution of that single quantitative variable using a box plot. And we can kind of see that distribution. If I wanted to, I could have done a GF histogram and looked at that. Um, I could have done a GF density. So we've got lots of choices for um, visualizations of one quantitative variable. And I'm getting a little bit of a warning. It's saying it removed um, some rows containing non-finite values. Those are the NAs, it just dropped them for us. So there's my distribution. Okay, so now we know how many people worked on average in our sample, um, and then we wanna see what some other reasonable values we could have observed were. So if we wanted to, we could find that confidence in full by hand, so we could compute the standard error, um, and in this case, it would be you know the standard deviation of this variable over the square root of the n, and that would give us the standard error and then we could do our point estimate plus or minus the standard error times the critical t value. And um, so with the normal distribution, I have some critical z scores memorized, like 1.96 for a 95% interval. But with the t distribution, you can't have these things memorized. They depend on the degrees of freedom. So um, we can compute a critical t value using the qt function. So here it is, QT 0 0.975, my degrees of freedom is N minus one, and then it gives me my um, critical T value, uh, which is really similar to what a critical Z value would have been. So it's, it's really similar um, to the normal distribution because we have such a big sample size. One thing that's a little bit funny is when you use the QT function, um, if I want a 95% interval, I have to put in 0.975. And that's because, let me do an XQT, see if we can see it. Um, R is always going to look for the area to the left. So I'm saying I want the line right here such that 97.5% um, of the data is to the left. And that's because I want 95% in the middle. I want 2.5% in either tail. And because it wants everything to the left, that's the 95% plus the 2.5%, which is the 97.5%. So here's the line um, that, that makes that true. So then we could um, compute the confidence interval by hand, our point estimate, plus or minus the critical T value times our standard error. And it looks like it's you know 40.69 to 41.868. Um, or we could just ask R to do it for us. So in this case, we'd use a T dot test. For with the one proportion, we used a prop dot test. Now we're using the T dot test and it works the same way. Tilde, the variable name, comma, data equals, and the name of our data. And let's see, it gives me my sample estimate, the mean of X, and it says it is this number, 41.28. And then it gives me the 95% confidence interval. Um, and the question is, how do we interpret that interval? 
And so the way I would interpret it is I am 95% confident that the true mean number of hours worked by people in the U.S. is between 40.5 hours and 42 hours per week. And does that make sense? Yeah, again, a full-time job is a 40-hour week, and um, and this is kind of around 40 hours, maybe a little bit higher. So I think that makes sense. Um, and now I'm noticing that my interval that I did with R and the interval that I did by hand turned out a little bit different, and that's because of the degrees of freedom. So in this case, it's using the degrees of freedom of 1,380, and that's because of all those missing values. Remember when we did this data visualization and it said it removed 967 rows? So then that's not really in the data set. So if I wanted um, my numbers to match up exactly, I could use that 1380. Um, one, Eight, well, it'll be 8-1 for the um, full sample size. So that would be my standard error. Maybe I'll copy that and put that down here. Instead of 0.3, we'll use this. And the other thing that would need to be different is my degrees of freedom, 1380. And that gives me, oh, it's still 1.96. Okay, so I don't really need to change that. I don't need to change my point estimate. So the thing that changed was my standard error based on the degrees of freedom. And now I think those numbers are gonna basically match up. 40.5, 42.04, sweet. So it was a difference of degrees of freedom. I think that the data set for the real lab doesn't have as many NA values, so it won't be as big a deal, but I have this real messy data set. And so sometimes things are a little bit weird. So that's inference for a single sample.